When he's not busy denying the existence of the genocide that's currently happening in PRC-occupied East Turkestan, or claiming that Hong Kong is much better off with the national security law, Daniel Dumbrell is usually busy trying to defame anybody who speaks out against the CCP by labeling them as being a racist. His favorite tactic for accomplishing this is to take completely out of context snippets of videos or conversations, which are sometimes years or even more than a decade old, in order to make someone appear as such. Today, I'm going to look at the first half of this video called White Supremacists Boosted by YouTube to Spread Asian Hate. As you can see, he took the liberty of putting Serpent ZA and Laowai86 in front of a picture of the Ku Klux Klan. I'm sure that with such a bold claim as this, Daniel has some very substantial evidence to back it up, right? As if I didn't already know. Originally, I was going to do this all in one video, but I decided to split it in half because I could only take so much of this verbal diarrhea at a time. Expect the second half to come later. Rather than presenting you with out-of-context clips of his nonsensical attempt to defame two completely innocent people, I'm going to let you listen to him for yourselves while I display my commentary in text form. Everybody take shelter, there's a Category 5 shitstorm headed your way. What's up guys, today I am going to give you a direct look into the darkest corners of YouTube when it comes to the agents of Asian hate. I have a previous video from two months ago called Anti-China Propaganda and the Anti-Asian Racism Connection. It's an eight minute video which describes the connection between anti-China propaganda and the rise of Asian hate. If you understand the connection already, there's no need to go and watch that video. If you truly believe it's purely coincidental that these two things are happening at the same time, just like perhaps it was purely coincidence when it was happening uh, during the anti-Japanese propaganda in the 80s, uh, maybe you should go and check that video out first. But regardless, whether you want to check that video out or not, what I'm going to do here is show you a couple of extremely racist individuals propped up by YouTube, not only spreading anti-China propaganda, but also going after China's people and culture, helping to promote the very environment necessary to dehumanize and attack Asians. I showed a small clip of these guys in my New Zealand video, and I received many comments from people explaining who these guys are, but, oh, I know who these guys are. I'm very, very well aware of them. I waited a long time to make this video. The two guys I'm gonna make, I'm gonna talk about today, uh, I know personally from when they lived in Shenzhen. Winston Sturzel, AKA Serpent ZA from South Africa and Matthew Tai, AKA Lawa86 from America are the subjects of this video. I wanted to bring these videos, uh, this this issue up with them directly uh, with a, in a face-to-face -face conversation or debate. The first time I offered to discuss or debate their problematic content was in January, 2020, a year and a half ago. Since that time, I've asked them uh, a few times, I think three or four times since then, and I even offered to pay uh, $700 to charity um, and drop uh, one of their VPN referral links in my video if they joined. Um, they didn't want to do it, though. Uh, Winston actually did debate me, though, on a topic related to his friend, a guy named Corey Selby. He's somebody who killed his two dogs and lived with the corpses until the neighbors had to call the cops on him because of the stench. And I'm not making this up. He was convicted of animal abuse, was ordered to do community service at a local animal shelter, but fled the state and never did it. There's an active arrest warrant out on him. But in the meantime, Winston was heavily promoting him and his channel. I found this really odd because Winston really loves to pretend to care about animal rights issues in China and the suffering of animals at the hands of Chinese people while actively promoting a guy who he knows because he was made fully aware killed his dogs in one of the most inhumane ways possible, starving them to death as they were probably looking at him, begging him for something to eat. And by the way, that police report that I put up on the screen is real. You can make your own request directly from the same court and get them yourselves to verify this. He said multiple times that they are fake. This is very, very easy to uh, verify. I'll provide you with a link to the final reply I made to Winston in our Twitter debate and you can decide for yourself what you think it all means. I think it's pretty revealing, but you can decide for yourself. I'll tell you why Winston is turning a blind eye to this. And it's not only because he doesn't really give a shit about animal rights, but because Corey, like him, is white and is also racist. Let me just give you a small preview of some of the things Winston's friend says. I hate old Chinese people. These people are dirty. And I think what I would say beyond that is just overall ignorance. You have to consider that these people are ignorant. 
Because of that, I hate the old people here in China. The old people here in China are not like the old people in America. Um, there are older people in America that are very intelligent, very wise, very humble, and you just won't find that here in China. This is allowed on YouTube, and people are still wondering, why are people treating Asians as subhuman? What parts of our allowable conversation within the constructs of our beautiful free speech system could possibly be contributing towards this? Corey's a nobody, though. That was simply to show you who these guys not only align with, but actively promote. Winston and Matt's YouTube channel have a combined subscriber base of over 1 million people watching their content. The impacts of what they do reach far beyond their dog killer friends content does. Winston used to make more positive videos about China while he was living there. There are a few different suspected reasons as to why he went so negative, but one thing that remained consistent throughout the entire time, regardless if he was saying positive or negative things about China, is that Winston is, will be, and always has been a racist. Here's a video from Winston from about a decade ago, and uh, you guys can just see for yourself the kinds of stuff he would say when he was off script. Mm, Beijing. Oh, culturally void. In Chinese, when you say something like, for instance, you say, Ni zhu zai nali, means where do you live? In Beijing, they say, Ni zhu zai nar. They add this ar thing to everything. It's so scary. Chuar. It sounds like... I was going to use the chuar. Chuar. Right. It, it kind of like sounds like somebody with special needs. Right. <laughs> no, no, seriously, it's like, you know, somebody with special needs would talk right that way. You know, right. just... <laughs> This is Winston not speaking amongst buddies in private. This is him with a camera in his face saying something that he knows will be published and broadcasted out. What's the purpose of this? What's the need to publish something like this? What would happen if he was talking about any other ethnic group, let's say in America? What if he started to talk about the African-American community and the way they speak, walk, talk, or act using similar language? He'd be canceled in a second. But this is a dream come true for him. He's found a zone of flexibility where he has the freedom to be his natural racist self. If he could, however, talk about the African-American community in the same way, and all of a sudden it became socially acceptable to do so, I can guarantee you he would be all over it. This is a guy who constantly reminisces about apartheid South Africa when white people had privilege over black people, when there was institutionalized racism allowing white people to get ahead. He complains about his lack of privilege in South Africa now that the apartheid is over. We can see this happening over and over again in his content, but I'm just going to first share one video for you which really summarizes quite a few different things all at once. He's going to be talking about both the stupid rich Chinese folk and the corrupt black South Africans. First, pay attention to the language when he's talking about rich people in China or rich black people in South Africa and contrast it directly to how he speaks about rich people in America. I was never rich in China, but I was certainly upper middle class. I sure. got to that point where I earned a lot more than the average person. Yeah. Okay. But still nowhere near the, the rich, the rich folk, the stupid rich folk. You know, before the ANC took over, um, you had a situation where the majority of the wealth was kind of in the hands of old families that have been, um, you know, there for a very long time. Sure. So, you know, obviously white people. But all of a sudden, this new wealth just popped out of nowhere because it's all through, you know, the, the government connections and the nepotism and the tenderpreneurship and all that stuff that happened in South Africa. Sure. So what you found, it was really bizarre, is overnight you saw an influx of luxury cars on the road. And I mean, sure. they just exploded everywhere. Right. And like I said, it was people that previously didn't even have a driver's license. In fact, they still didn't. They would buy them. And so you'd find like all these trashed BMWs. You'd see a brand new X5 with a massive dent in it because, hey, they've just got their car and they've just learned how to drive and they're crashing into Literally the, the same as China. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that's why I said we can draw so many parallels. Sure. So when you've got this new money and you don't know what to do with it, you go out and you, you get what you think you need. Yeah. Flashy car. Sure. Flashy watch. Sure. Flashy clothes. Stupid, lavish uh, house or apartment. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. It just shows you that it doesn't matter how rich you are in China, you still have to live <laughs> and deal with the same thing that the poor people have. To. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like in a country like this or where we are now, Beverly Hills, you're rich, you're other people, you know, you get yeah. to live above everyone else. Quite literally. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> live in these beautiful villas Hills, or whatever yeah. and 
beautiful Absolutely immaculate stunning. gardens and you have the best restaurants and food and um, so there is a big difference. I want to be clear about something here. I didn't overlay those pictures of white people on white people only segregated benches while he was reminiscing about the old days when white people who were responsible with their money and who had been there for a really long time apparently had most of the wealth. He put that picture up himself. That's in his original video. In the full video, he really paints a picture of this, you know, responsible group of white people who built up generational wealth without once mentioning the context of the apartheid and how advantaged they were over the poor black Africans who don't know how to drive cars and whose only chance to build up wealth would, of course, just be through corruption. Let's paint them all with the same broad brush without any further context while talking about your white superior race. And all those photos of wealthy black people, I didn't overlay those either. That's in his original video when he's talking about this new money, new wealth, these corrupt people. He grills into Mexicans and Latinos a bit too, but I think he backed off of it when he realized that this isn't a safe zone. His safe zone is racism towards Chinese people. Let me just show you a couple of examples of that. One of him laughing at a drunk, homeless Mexican guy. And then another where Matt assumes that a group of homeless Latinos are gang members laughing that they sleep on a piece of cardboard. And their only concern is that they don't want them to touch their bikes. Like, oh, we saw uh, a weird homeless dude today, right? We saw a couple. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this weird Mexican homeless dude yeah. is laying there. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, maybe he's not homeless. Maybe he's just drunk. Maybe he was just drunk as hell. Yeah. It looked like he was itching or something. Yeah. Look at these Deposit? gang banger homeless people. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking MS-13 tattoos. <laughs> Whatever they are, I don't care as long as they don't steal our bikes. Yeah. Drugged no, out meth heads. Looks like they're getting ready to lounge in the sun. Why? It's hot. They got some cardboard to sleep on. That's nice. Keeps you away from the snakes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this is really odd. When they encounter social issues in China, they pretend to care so much about it and how the Chinese government is failing them. I can show you right now how fake they are, if it's not already glaringly obvious. First, let's say we can now safely establish that Winston doesn't really give a shit about homeless people, and he certainly doesn't care about the wealth gap. Let's listen back to the last part of the earlier video. It just shows you that it doesn't matter how rich you are in China, you still have to live... <laughs> and deal with the same thing that the poor people have to. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like in a country like this or where we are now, Beverly Hills, you're rich, you're other people, you know? You get yeah. to live above everyone else. Quite literally. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> live in these beautiful villas Hills, or whatever yeah. and it's beautiful immaculate gardens and you have the best restaurants and food and um, so there is a big difference. So when you buy expensive things in a white majority country, they're beautiful and immaculate. But when you're a Chinese in China or a black person in South Africa, you're wasteful and you're buying stupid, lavish things. But more importantly, he highly values segregation, living above everyone else, being like other people. You don't have to deal with the same things that poor people have to. He even went on in part of the video that, that's not in that particular clip where he talks about running into poor people in the shopping malls. But in Beverly Hills, it's far more segregated. This is a pretty clearly defined opinion he has here. What happens when he finds out there's a bit of a wealth gap in China? You look around the streets and you see people and you just expect that everybody has equal opportunities within China. But unfortunately, that's not the case. It's one of the most unequal places in the world where there's such a huge wealth gap between the poor and the rich and those with power and those without. Well... It looks like now it's time to pull out that sappy stock music and tell the tragic story of inequality and wealth gap issues because now suddenly, in a matter of weeks, he cares about these issues and it's got nothing to do with a desperate attempt to shit on China any chance he gets. <laughs> this guy will pretend to care and pull out these emotional voices and personal stories to connect with his audience. He did the same thing when there were racial tensions in Guangzhou with the African community. After years of saying in his videos that despite being born in South Africa, he's British, he identifies as such, and he has more in common with them. And after continually reminiscing about apartheid South Africa, he suddenly says he's concerned for his African brothers in Guangzhou. And even pulls out his DNA test to show that he's 1.2% sub-Saharan African to prove it. <laughs> I mean, this guy is an absolute fraud. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But I want to move into the specific things he says to promote and cultivate Asian hate in America and beyond. He knows 
there's a spike in Asian hate in America. He's admitted it, and he's even said, I'm trying to figure this out. I mean, it's mostly black people, but I don't get it. I'm, I'm looking into it. I really want to research this. <laughs> While posting that Chinese students and their associations are oftentimes proxies of the Chinese Communist Party, he knows exactly what this will do in a yellow peril environment of McCarthyism, where people who are even mistaken as Chinese are being brutally beaten up and killed. Sounds like a great time to put this tweet out, doesn't it? Let's now see what video he put out during that period of time when the numbers came in showing that Asian hate crimes were up 867% and the Twitter hashtag Asians are humans was trending. But it's more about the state, really, of a lot of these public bathrooms. And I think you can tell a lot about a society by the toilets. I know that sounds weird. But this really gives you a no-nonsense look at Chinese society because public toilets are the great equalizer. That's right. During a time when society even felt the need to clarify that Asians were humans on Twitter, he dug through his old archived footage of China, found a video of shit, and said this is a no-nonsense look at Chinese society. Really? Really? Let's see what other gems we can find. China really doesn't have a very long history. And even this claim of 5,000 years of history has been debunked through other means too. So anyway, there's no proof of that. It's a bunch of nonsense. And certainly if you had 5,000 years of history, you wouldn't be spitting on the street and defecating on the street and stuff like that because that's not what a civilization does. Why? Seriously, why? What are you trying to do here? Is this educational material? What's your end goal? Your end goal is to just prove that China's a shitty country that is, isn't even as old as it says? Why? For what reason? What are you really out to do here? They're rhetorical questions, of course. It's obviously because you're a racist who's making up for being born too late to live in a society with institutionalized racism against black people, giving you the upper hand, and now you're so bitter that all you can do is build content around trying to find another outlet to reaffirm to yourself that you are white and superior. We see right through you. And your followers who watch this video and still support you are either no different than you or are just extremely ignorant. Or maybe they themselves are so racially abused that they seek validation from you, which is a legitimate phenomena that I'm not going to get into here. But it's just despicable. Let me see what else I have for you here. Okay, so this is how they speak about a Maori leader in Australia who seems to be siding with China or at least being open-minded to China because the truth is she's actually far from pro-China. But... On one particular issue, she deviated a bit. This was their reaction. <laughs> so you guys know Chin Woman. Uh, yeah. Again, we still have to catch up on her name, which yes. we promise to do every episode now. Yes. She is the po a politician in New, New Zealand. Zealand. He loves she, China. She loves China. She's yeah. gotten, she, we're really disappointed with her decision to abandon the Western world in favor of China. Sure. She has a chin tattoo, um, not because she's a rapper, no. but in fact because part she's of culture. Maori. Mm -hmm. So, they spoke about Nanaya Mahuta multiple times, and despite their extreme due diligence when researching other topics, they still don't care to look up her name. That's fine, but not only do they not care to look up her name, not only do they substitute her name with Chin Woman, not only do they put a Photoshop picture of Winston beside her mocking her tattoo, not only are they laughing at her, not only condescendingly clarifying that she's not a rapper... You couldn't look up for one moment how much that tattoo you're making fun of meant to her, how many decades she took before deciding to revive this part of Maori culture, or even how the final decision was to commem commemorate her father's death. But hey, let's put that aside for a second, eh? Because there's a, there's a bigger atrocity here, isn't there? And that's that she doesn't agree with two failure-in-life white supremacists on their China position. How terrible of her. They, do, they, they, they continually do stuff like this, though. And, you know, there was another recent bizarre outburst where Winston and Matt went after two young Uyghur women who are famous on Chinese social media and decided to expand onto YouTube. They uh, attacked her nonstop until her Twitter account was suspended. They were so outraged that they abused them for not agreeing with Winston and Matt that they were being abused by the Chinese government. I mean, it's absolutely absurd, absurd behavior. I was on an interview with her uh, recently. I got to talk to her a bit too. That interview is going to be coming out on someone else's channel soon, and I'll share the link with you. But she was really hurt by that. She was like, "What? what is going on? Um, I'm really looking forward to when that interview comes out, and I'm going to share that with you when it does. Um, but let's see what else we have here. So 
um, my friend Matt, a, a better Matt, not the, not Winston's Matt, over on his channel, Nuance, sat through an entire one of their videos and broke down bit by bit one of their new format videos where they dress up in motorcycle jackets, pretend they're back in China, and play old footage on their green screens behind them while desperately trying to shit on everything they see. It really shows the desperation and effort they go through to paint China as this backwards land not worthy of the white man's respect. And I'll show you a small clip from that. And I will put the link to the full video, uh, to uh, the nuance video below. But let's start with the first one here. Yeah. And you can still like raise your wealth standards and this, still have nice stuff. This color blue oh my gosh. is just, that reminds me of- It's synonymous with poverty. It's not, just, I can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, or Walmart, or anywhere else in the fucking world and buy a blue tarp. Blue just seems to be the color of tarps. It's, it just reminds me of China. Yeah. That color blue and the red. That should be the flag of China. It should be that. They hate China. It's not the CCP, guys. Think about what he just said there. Blue tarp is about poverty. It's gross, poor, rural. You should make that the color of the China flag. Because that's what, uh, what I think of China. You said it, man. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Gross. It should, it should be that. That's what it should that, be. That like color. that tarp blue. <laughs> you know, all the, the, know. all the trucks have it. They're either yeah. red or blue. It just it reminds me of destruction. Are you guys getting this nuance? I mean, I'm trying to deliver nuance. It's not very difficult to give nuance to the shit that they say. It's so disgusting on its face that uh, do I really need to go through this and tell you what they really are meaning through all of this? It's gross. What I've shown you has already sufficiently shown you that their I love the Chinese people, but I hate the Chinese government shtick is absolute BS. These guys are just all round racists and China and its people are an easy, socially acceptable target for them. All right, that's about all of this shit I can handle today. So far, his logic has been on par with a three-year-old screaming about why they should be allowed to have as many cookies as they want, but I'm sure he saved his best logic for the second half of the video. We'll just have to wait and find out for ourselves. Now, Daniel, since I know you and your show buddies are going to watch this, I eagerly await your response so I can run laps around that too. Unless, of course, you're too scared to pick a fight with this faceless troll. And since you can't see my face right now, I should tell you that I'm smiling very condescendingly. Until next time, fuck the CCP.